Just a heads up, I completely forgot to record my mouse for this, so I'm sorry for that, but um, hopefully you can still follow along fine. Hello everybody, and welcome to my tutorial on Soft IK for Blender. Um, I've decided to make this tutorial because I've realized how easy it is to actually set up Soft IK in Blender, and it gives you a very big benefit when it comes to uh, legs, especially, but also anything that's IK related, really. Uh, walking uh, animations really... Um, have an advantage using uh, soft IK looks much better uh, I've also had some people ask me how I actually did my soft IK and I'll put the video that I uh, learned this from in the description but his video uh, is a little bit outdated at this point and it didn't cover a, an issue I was having consistently so that's kind of why I'm making this tutorial um, I'm gonna make this I'm, well I'm gonna base this around that you already know rigging to an extent, I'm not gonna teach you like the basics of rigging. I'm guessing that you already know something about it because you're searching for soft IK. Um, but I'll just start to get into the meat of it. Um, soft IK and Blender basically just relies on one feature, and that is um, IK stretching. IK stretching is uh, a little feature in the inverse kinematics tab of the bone properties that allows you to uh, stretch a bone to the IK target. Uh, so if I put the, both of my bones here on like 0 0.1 on the stretching value you can see that it starts to stretch with um or towards my IK target and the higher I make this value the more it stretches and the less it bends so you can see right now it's not even bending inwards at all it's just stretching and we're going to make use of this because if we, if we decide to put this on a really really low value like 0 point uh 0 0.001 for example that's a very very low value you can see that it basically eliminates the IK popping um, when it goes from sort of not really full extension to full extension. Um, it's very smooth. You can see it. Uh, if I turn it off, you can see the difference. So this is without it. Yeah, you can very clearly tell the difference between the two. And the whole idea behind this um, way of doing it is that we are going to extract the feature that fixes the IK popping, but remove the feature that stretches uh, the leg to the IK target. I'll be showing you how to do this. Also, how to fix uh, that issue I was talking about. And you might think that you could just add a limit scale to these bones, but the thing is that the IK constraint actually overrides that. So it doesn't matter if you have a limit scale on it, it will still stretch. So there's no point in doing that, that won't help. Uh, the way we're going to have to do this is that we are going to have a, to create a new IK target that stops when it reaches the bottom of the leg. Um, and the way we'll do this is that we'll have a big bone that goes from the top of our IK chain to the bottom of our IK chain. Uh, this bone will then stretch towards our actual IK target, but it will, it will have a limit a scale constraint on it, so it won't be able to scale further than the one. So when it reaches this point here, it can't scale anymore, but it'll still point towards this target. And then we'll have our other IK target actually follow the end of that stretching bone. And then the leg will follow the IK target that's, a, that's attached to the stretching bone. So it will basically keep this part, but remove everything that goes above that. Um, so let's just do that real quick. We're going to edit mode. Hold on, let me select, like, turn off screencast key so you can actually see what I'm doing. We'll select the top bone, we'll select the bottom. Uh, bone. I'll press F to create a bone in between. And since this is upside down now, we need to uh, invert it, so Alt plus F to invert that. Uh, I'm just going to rename this to uh, stretch soft IK dot R. So this is my right leg. Um, and then we also we need to make this bone actually stretch towards our IK target. So uh, add bone constraint stretch to. Uh, choose your rig. Choose your IK target. And I'll also turn off maintain volume just so it's a little bit easier to see what the hell is going on. Um, but you can see that that bone now stretches towards the IK target, which is exactly what we want. But we want to limit its scale so it doesn't go above uh, this, basically. Uh, so just add a limit scale constraint, set its y axis because that's the one it's stretching on, maximum to one. Uh, <laughs> you can see now that it doesn't actually go further. So this is exactly what we want this bone. It's now stuck at one, but we it still compresses. Right. So we now need to make the rest of the leg follow the end of this bone. 
And to do that, we need to create a new IK target for it because you, you. I wish you could just change what, if it uses the tail over the head of the bone in the IK, in the IK constraint. But you can't do that, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to add a new bone for it. But it's pretty simple. Um, select the bottom of your stretch bone. I press E to extrude. Move it forward a bit so we can actually see it. Now rename this to um, IK target soft IK so R. Okay. So now we have that, uh, we'll select our um, bone that has the IK constraint on it and we'll change its target to the uh, soft IK, IK target. And you will now see that it doesn't go above, or well, more than max extension, it doesn't actually stretch anymore, but it still compresses, because this bone compresses. And since uh, our bone chain is following the end of the stretch, stretch bone, it you know functions like it should. Now, if we uh, if we go into the graphic view here, you can see that it it's um it's pretty smooth. But one thing that you might notice right now is that it stops way too early. You'll still get that sort of snapping effect, or well, a, a, an abrupt stop effect. Uh, that's just because the default position of the bones is slightly bent, and it's most likely going to be that on all your character as well. And to fix that, we'll just increase the maximum distance this bone can be stretched to something very very small, like zero point three or something. So 1.03, and then when we move this down, you'll see that it actually stretches a little bit further, and then stops. So now it is way smoother than it was before. And that is basically your soft IK done, actually. <laughs> it's not more, it, there's not a lot more to it, but there's something that you might have uh, noticed going on here. Well, you might have noticed, it's very subtle. Unless we decide to, for example, move the body of the character down, you'll see it quite clear clearly. The foot actually scales inwards. Um, it becomes smaller. And then when we move the body up, so the leg becomes um, fully extended, the foot scales upwards. It becomes bigger. Oh, of course, as well. Uh, I should mention this as well. You need to attach your uh, stretch bone to uh, not your thigh bone because it'll do weird stuff, but to the bone that controls your thigh bone, which is in my case my body bone. So I'll just go ahead and parent it to my body bone. And there we go. Okay, but it still has that issue. It still scales up and down. You can see it quite clearly on the foot there. And there's a pretty simple way of fixing that. We The idea is that you just take the scale, take the scale of these bones um, and you subtract it by itself. You invert it and you subtract it by itself. So uh, basically, it'll counteract the scale that's happening here by taking its own scale, inverting that, and applying it back. Um, but the thing is that we can't do this with just these bones, because if we were to do that with just these bones, we would get a loop. It will, it would scale down like this, it would try to counteract that, and then with it trying to counteract that, it would affect its scaling, and that would have counteract it, and it would affect its scaling, and it would counteract it, and it would just loop. So we can't do that, unfortunately, but it's a pretty simple fix. We just need to duplicate these bones. So I'll just select these two, go into edit mode, press shift plus D to duplicate them, and now we have a duplicate version of them. Um, I'll rename these to uh, soft, actually no, thigh main, uh, soft IK, and the same for the bottom one. Puff main soft IK dot R. Okay. So basically what we need to do now is we need to take the rotation, or well, not the rotation, the scale of the soft IK bones and apply it, except inverted to our actual bones. It's a pretty simple way you could do that. I actually figured this out myself. I didn't realize that the uh, copy scale constraint had a power uh, setting, but you can invert that power setting and that gives us an advantage because usually, oh well before I was doing it with the drivers which was a little bit iffy, but basically um, on our main bones add a copy scale constraint. We'll set our um, targets to our rig and then choose our bone which is going to be the soft IK version of the bone that we're on right now. I'm on cough, cough main R, so I'll check uh, for um, cough main soft IK R. And then I'll make sure to set the power to minus one because we want it to be inverted and not additive. And then we'll go up to our uh, thigh main, or it's called thigh main for me, but our upper bone. Uh, copy scale. 
our target and soft like k flag main soft like k dot r power minus one there we go it's now it's now all sorts of nice um it actually you can still kind of see it it does move a little bit but it's not it's so little you probably you will never notice it you might notice though that when it goes to max extension it still does scale up and it's pretty noticeable actually um i'm not sure there's much you can do about that unless you want to um let me just hide these unless you want to change change the uh max value here if you put it back at one it actually it removes the issue but if you wanted to have a sm much more smoother transition transition my bad you could just set it to that again and have to live with this but there is a way you can limit it even more or hide it even more and that is to just toggle off the uh, scale on the foot bone um so in here scale set it to none and now only the leg will actually have that effect you can still sort of see it in, on the leg but you're not going to notice it nearly as much and this version of it is better as well so yeah oh of course actually one more thing you make sure to set this make sure to set this the copy scale to local space so it doesn't interfere with anything else and doesn't get affected by anything else there we go uh the problem is now that maybe you want to scale up the rig like so the foot doesn't inherit that scale but you can just basically do a copy scale on this on the foot bone as well and choose whatever bone you wanted to copy the scale from so now it'll function properly again uh but it still won't be affected by the scale of these upper bones because it doesn't have it has the it's an inherent scale off so basically this just is a replacement for that but for a specific bone instead pretty short tutorial um Honestly, it would take longer than this, but it, it's a pretty simple setup, and I'm surprised how easy it was after trying to do this for a very long time myself. But I'll uh, link uh, my sources down in the description if you want to watch them. And I'll also link this uh, rig, just this blend file, in the description as well. And I'll also, I'm also <laughs> going to give credit to uh, the guys who uh, um, extracted these uh, models. Because I've I got this from a pack and it's a very cool pack. I really recommend you check it out. It's basically a Halo pack where you can um, make your own Halo character. And uh, yeah, so that's cool and all. You could just mirror this to the other side and it would work fine. Um, everything should still work no like normal. Otherwise, still your good old IK, but it's now soft. All right. And if it does still scale a little bit weirdly, by the way, you can. Change the copy scale power value to something else, and it might uh, help it a little bit. It really depends on what kind of uh, rig you have, or what kind of bones you have. Yeah, but that's really just up to the kind of rig you have. I don't think you need to change it. Usually, you shouldn't have to change it, change it, but maybe you do. I haven't tried it with any other um, a rig than a than this rig and another one. So, and they're both bipeds. But um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in whatever I make next.